My name is Memo, and I'm part of the developer relations team at AWS, uh, based in Latin America. Uh, and this is Let's Code. Usually, uh, my good friend John would be here, but uh, he can't make it today. So I'm going to be talking about security and uh, different security services at, at AWS. Uh, unlike John, and uh, who's your regular host, I'm not based in Australia. I'm based in uh, Mexico. So it's a little later in the day, I guess, earlier in the past, uh, if you're watching from uh, Australia. If, uh, if you're in chat and you can let me know if my voice sounds okay, if my browser looks okay, uh, just, just let me know. Uh, I'm gonna clean up this S3 bucket real quick to make it to make it a little bit easier to understand in uh, in the future. Before we get started, we're going to be working with a few commands and um, and a few different services from AWS. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we got quite a quite a few different things to cover today. If you have uh, thank you, Blue Pill 42 for letting me know that everything is working fine. Uh, it's always uh, nerve-wracking to think that you're just yelling into the void. Um, uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to look at a, a quick, quick demo uh, using S3, EC2, and IAM um, to do a few things. So first things first, we got a little... S3 bucket, uh, and S3 is the simple storage service from AWS, and it's a really easy way to store objects in it. It's not files, it's an object storage system. So they look like files, but they're immutable, and they have a number of different benefits. Um, it's uh, it's really, really handy if you have to store files at, um, at scale, or if you have to uh, store a lot of files. If you heard a weird noise, that's my dog waking up from her four hour nap. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we have some files here and uh, we wanna access those files from an EC2 instance. Um, and what we have right now is I'm gonna quickly change tabs here. And this is the EC2 dashboard. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look for any instances that I might have running. Um, oh, wrong region. I'm in Sao Paulo. Um, and you know what, let's let's just roll with the punches. Instead of looking for the instance, I'm not sure which region I created it in. Uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new instance. Uh, and it's, an instance is a virtual server, if you may. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the AMI, uh, um, which is the Amazon machine image. So I'm basically saying what type of operating system I want on my machine, the different versions. I'm gonna go with this first one, which is the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. And then I'm just, since this is just a quick demo and it's not gonna be long lived, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a uh, T2 micro instance, a small, smaller instance. You can see some of the details about the instance right there. Uh, I'm going to review and launch it, and I'm gonna, just going to click launch. And what we're going to do here is um, we're going to need a key pair so we can SSH into our instance once it's running. So we want to be able to establish that uh, uh, secure connection to our instance. I already have a key pair, so uh, I'm going to choose an existing key pair. Um, apparently, I don't have a key, an existing key pair, which is going to make things interesting. Um, let me think about this for a second. I think it's going to be cleaner for everybody to understand if I just find that other instance that I have running, which I'm suspecting I did in Ireland for some reason. Um, so let's just look for it there. And if it's not there, first try, we'll move on and we'll just create this instance. Um, what I'm saying, I've got a pretty complex setup on my side. Uh, um, so I just don't, I don't want to have to be switching a lot and confuse anybody. Uh, so let me just look at this. Yeah, so there's a running instance here. Um, T2 micro looks like the instance that I want. But if it's not, let's take a quick look at it and see if we can see what um, key pairs are associated to it. So 
inbound rules, security group, uh, subnet. Looks like it's the right one. Let me. Whoa, Alexa, para. Sorry, that was my Alexa speaking in Spanish. I don't know why. Alexa, para. Wow, every everything is everything is happening all at once. Sorry about that. Uh, she said she didn't know how to stop. Okay, let's just do this uh, from the top. Sorry about that. Um, all the confusion. But what we're going to do is we're just going to launch a new instance and then we'll have it nice and clean, brand new instance, and we'll take it from there. So since I'm in Mexico, one, geographically one of the closer regions to Sao Paulo, I noticed I didn't have any instance in my account there. So I'm going to go and create a new instance and stop uh, waffling here for a second. So uh, running instances, launch instance, and then I'm going to click select. I'm going to do what I said I was going to do originally, and uh, that's that. Then I'm going to hit launch, and since there's no key pairs in this region, I'm going to create a new key pair. I'm going to give that key pair a name, and I'm going to call it Let's Code um, underscore key pair, and then so it's very clear dash SP for Sao Paulo. And I'm gonna download that key pair. I'm gonna need this if I wanna establish an SSH connection to my server. And then I'm gonna click launch instances. And what's this gonna do? This is gonna start my instances. And we're, um, we're going to uh, take a couple minutes to do that. And while we do that, I'm gonna show you a quick neat little trick um, for, your, for those of you that are keen eyed. You might've noticed that here, over here at the top um, where usually you would see my uh, account number, you are seeing my name, which is the name of the you, my user for this account, and uh, an alias. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. Um, and I got a little pre-recorded demo to do that. Um, and we'll do that while we just make sure that the, TT, the instance is running, although I think it's already running. But let's take a look at this real quick. So basically what you do is uh, from the IAM console, you can go and click customize. And instead of having that number that might be hard to remember, you'll, uh, with just 12 digits, you can create a friendly name, friendly alias. Uh, it'll ask you to create it there. If someone's already beat you to the punch and they have the one you want, they'll, um, they'll take it. You won't be able to use it. But um, if you haven't, uh, and like you saw there, we're creating exactly the one I'm using right now. It'll uh, allow you to create one that you can tell people it's the name of your company or the name of the product or the name of the, uh, or something easier to remember. Um, a bunch of digits is hard to remember. So that way you're, you'll be sure that you're hitting the right one. So now we got our instance running. Uh, and what we're gonna do with this instance is uh, we're going to click on the instance, make sure that everything is well and good and we're going to click connect on it and to make it real simple right now I'm just going to use uh, the instance connect but you could use SSH uh, I'm on a Windows box so I don't love the terminal I'd rather do this uh, for a second um, I also have a Mac over here but then I'd have to connect and pull down this the PEM file so Let's see how quick this is and we'll take it from there. So the first thing that we have is we have this brand new instance and let's say you would wanna use uh, the AWS CLI to pull down uh, some files from that S3 bucket. And if you've used this before, you kind of quickly go AWS S3 and then copy and then the path to the file you wanna copy. And this is gonna fail by the way. Um, And uh, it'll say we have a bucket that's called, oops, that's back backwards. Um, there are developers. Let's code. And then uh, we have a file called error, new secret stuff. 
and we want to copy it to a file called local secrets.txt. And this is going to fail. Um, and it's going to fail because it's going to tell us that it's unable to locate the credentials. Um, so it doesn't know how to use the AWS CLI. So the first thing that we have to do is configure. And well, it'll ask us for an access key ID and an access secret. And those two things are associated to a user uh, within our account. So I'm switching back to my, in my browser. And uh, this is the IAM console. You can notice there's a, a users tab on the left. There was also one on the right. There's a couple of users here. One is called memo, which is me. And uh, then there's another one that's called uh, let's code EC2. Uh, this one is a blank one with no permissions that I'm going to use for this specific purpose. So um, what we want to do is get the security credentials for this. You can see the access key here. Um, and I have the secret in a different file. Uh, you can only download that the file with the secret once. You could technically recreate it, but then uh, and destroy this one. Um, I don't want to show both on stream because uh, then you could spoof me and I could have a bad time with that. There's nothing really in this account, but uh, it would also not be super convenient. So we're going to do the secret access key. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly find my file with the other um, with the other piece of data. Oh no, that's not it. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. The next thing I'm going to do is create a role and start adding permissions to the role so I can do exactly what I want. Um, but I have to get the secret key first. And apparently it's not on the right file that I thought I had. Well, we're going to live dangerously then. What we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to cancel out of this. And uh, we're going to try that again. It'll be as configure. And I'm going to get rid of these. And I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to do that. Come over here. Paste that in. And then for the other one, I'll just show you a terminal that is a different terminal there. Um, you can look at that for a second. That is unrelated for the time being. I just want to protect my secret. Uh, and you should be very careful with this. Uh, this is sensitive information. It's your username and password program for programmatic access when it comes to your account. So you definitely don't want to be uploading this to GitHub repos or anything of uh, that sort. Uh, I've heard the horror stories and you don't want to do that. Um, I'm just finishing with the configuration just, and then clearing this out of my window so we can go back to the camera plus the browser. And now if we try and run that same that, that same command we ran earlier, which is uh, AWS S3 copy, we should be able to get a different error and see what happens there. And what it's saying is that an error occurred, uh, which is uh, 403, so it's forbidden. It's not. It's no longer saying it can't find the credentials. It found the credentials, but it wasn't able to hit that file. And that's because uh, someone was pointing out in chat, uh, which is awesome AWS, uh, they we should have some sort of set of permissions on this on this user. Whoops, exactly what I didn't want, what I didn't want to show was on screen, but uh, very briefly. So uh, I mean, don't worry. This this is all gonna get burned to the ground as soon as I'm done streaming. But um, please don't uh, snipe my chat my stream. It'd be very uh, annoying. Um, so now that we have this, what we can do is go to our user. And this same user that we're using, we can add permissions to it. Uh, and you can add them to a group that uh, and the group could have a number of permissions. You can copy them from an existing user or you can attach 
uh, policies directly. I have a few policies here that we created just for this example. So there's one called let's code read only and I'm clicking on it just so we can see it uh, kind of quickly. So what it's saying is uh, it's allowing some components for the S3 service or some actions on the S3 service. We can see all the different actions, but we also can see here that we've limited the role, the policy to only give us access to a specific bucket. And it's only giving us, giving us access to uh, read and list actions on the bucket. So we can't act on the bucket. We can't delete anything on the bucket. Um, and we're, we're trying to do this to simulate that we're going in a slowly adding permissions as needed. You don't want to go crazy and add every permission to any uh, to every single resource on your account because that's how you a small mis mistake becomes a big mistake or there's a breach. So you want to follow the least permissive model. So now that we've added that permission to that, that existing user, what we can do here is um, try that again. And uh, now instead of getting an error, what we got was download. And uh, come on, select. So it downloaded, uh, it actually executed that command that we wanted. And if we look, if we list what's here, we'll see that there's just a single file called local secrets. I guess it would have been more uh, better demo if I listed it uh, before to make sure that uh, you, you knew I wasn't cheating you. But um, believe me, uh, we, could, we could do it again and call the file something else. Local secrets or real and then that'll download again and now there'll be two files in here and the the two files that i downloaded so let's say i'm going to work on um the local secrets for real file do some editing or whatever secret stuff another important information for the stream whoa that's not how you spell stream and um, then I'm gonna just close out of this. And we've, um, we've edited that file. We have a new version. Now we wanna push it back to our bucket. And what we're gonna do here is say AWS S3. And the way the CLI works, AWS is the main command for the CLI. Then you use the short name or the, command, uh, the name for the service that you wanna use then the action that you want to do the service and then the parameters for that action. So I'm going AWS S3 and then copy, but now we're going to do it the other way around. So um, local secret for whoa, real.txt. Sorry if my um, keyboard is super clicky, I apologize. And then S3 uh, and developers, let's go. And we do that. And I have an error. Typo in the local secrets for raw. Come on, memo. Um, typing is not my forte. <laughs> uh, typing is always the hardest part about streaming. So now that I'm I'm doing that, uh, it it tried to do an upload, but then I got a new error, which is access denied uh, when calling the put object operation on that bucket. And I could solve this the same way I solved it before. Uh, I could add permissions, and I already have a, a policy that I can attach to it. So um, developer oh i think it's actually called let's code yeah and so now we're it's listing where it was listing two earlier it's only listing one because one's already attached to the to the uh user so it wouldn't make any sense to attach the same policy twice there it would be an identical policy uh, and let's look at this other policy and see what it, this one's doing and i believe this one it has every permission for s3 um Looks like it has a lot more of them, but it's still scoped down to just that bucket, which is definitely what you want to do. Um, if you're writing a script and you're like messing around with one bucket and you're like, oh, oh uh, RM minus RF, just recursively remove everything from my bucket. 
and you don't have your permission scope down and you have a typo, you delete the wrong bucket, you could it could be really bad. Um, so you and you might you could recover your files, but you might have ca cause an outage or uh, customers might be confused. So let's uh, scoping them down to a single resource. In this case, we have the bucket and I want to this second one trips uh, people up every now and then even even me uh, uh, if I'm not paying attention that slash uh, star after the name of the bucket what you're saying is I want to give it access to the bucket and everything inside of the bucket so it can actually act on on items that are stored in the bucket so um, we're gonna attach that to our to our user uh, and the user we associated with the EC2 instance by configuring that uh, AWS CLI with the instance um, using the access key and the access secret that we uh, talked about a second ago. So I'm just gonna run the command again. And now it says upload. If we go back to the S3 bucket, you'll see that this is what it was. It looked like earlier, just had new secret stuff and, and a little image there. And now, uh, if I refresh this view of the bucket, you'll see that we have a file called local secrets for real. If we click on that, um, we should be able to see it. Oh, nope, because it doesn't have private access. I mean, public access, but uh, it's just the text file. You, we can see the timestamp. Uh, I could download it and show it to you, but uh, that's too much work. But we can see here that it was... Uh, uploaded maybe you know, almost five hours later than the other one it's slightly larger so um i believe it's 823 in gmt minus five where i uh happen to be um it's probably a little bit earlier wherever you are tomorrow so let me know how the future is in chat let me make sure that i uh yeah i'm uh this is live your ears is it too loud Yeah, this, this isn't geared to a specific certification. Um, uh, this is just problems around security and not problems, but features that people ask about and different concepts in a real setting, doing something like, I wanna pull a file from a, from a, uh, from a server. Uh, let me give a quick chat. Um, this is a different series. The name of the series is Developers Let's Code. Um, we ran right after uh, one of the CQ series, and I don't know why the title didn't change, but uh, we can I can try that again. Title developers. Thank you for letting me know. Thought I did that. Now it did it. <laughs> uh, Twenty minutes late. All right, so. And let's let's keep going, um, and we uh, we can we can take a look at that. I wanted to cover some of the IAM concepts that we talked about a, a little bit. So IAM is the Identity and Access Management Service from AWS, and that um, Identity and Access Management Service, what it allows us to do is to control what resources have ac what identities have access to what resources in, in our account. And I'm trying to use the specific words uh, because there's two types of identities. There's users and users normally access the uh, our resources in AWS using a, a username and password. Or uh, if you're doing programmatic access, you um, you would do it with the access, uh, the, the key and the secret. And then the other identity is roles. And roles don't have a specific username and password associated to them. But uh, what they do is they have temporary passwords and roles can be assigned to different things. You could assign a role to a server. You could assign a role to a Lambda function. Um, and with the in the role, you could assign it permissions. And we're going to go over this in a second. Um, and all the permissions are actually wrapped in what we call policies. And you can use some of the policies that we already have. There's some that you can just take and run with, or you can have uh, very customized policies. It's up to you. Um, but let's uh, let's take a quick look at that. So 
And let's say we wanted uh, uh, to recapitulate what I just did. If we just want to redo what I did, the first thing I would do is uh, we, we would create a new user and I'm going to call this one uh, let's code security because that's the topic of the day user. And um, then here's the first decision that you need to make. Is this a user that's gonna be accessing the your AWS account through the console, through the web portal, what I'm looking at right now, or are they only gonna be accessing uh, programmatically? So uh, the AWS uh, different APIs, the SDKs for the different languages, or the CLI. Uh, in my case, uh, I just wanna give it uh, programmatic access and uh, we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna click next permissions. We could create a group or we could add them to a group. So let's say you have many, many users that all have the same type of, um, you want them all to have the same access. Um, you have all the people that work on one feature or they only work on a service or they only work with databases. Uh, then instead of doing it user per user, you, you probably want to have a group and a group is an easy way to manage multiple users. And you can have users that are parts of uh, part of different groups. Uh, so you can have a superset of the different uh, permissions that they have. You could copy permissions from an existing user. So if I wanted to make someone that had the exact same uh, permissions as the one that we just created, we, I could just do that. Or um, we could add a, attach an existing policy directly. So just for the sake of uh, examples, I'm going to look for an S3 policy. Here's um, the different S3 policies. You'll notice that some have this little orange AWS icon box. Uh, and what, what that means is they are AWS managed. These are policies that have been created by AWS. Um, they're kind of like the de facto standard policies. And uh, then you have others that are customer managed. Um, and those are the ones that you can take and you've customized, you've made in a different way. We're just trying to just uh, make a distinction between what a, a policy that you created is versus a policy that someone else uh, is managing like us. So you, you'll notice that there's one called Amazon S3 full access. And then we have one that's called let's code full access S3. They're similar, but one is scoped down. Uh, I'm going to take this other different one. Oops, sorry. Uh, I'm going to use this other different one, uh, the AWS managed one. Uh, I can also tag everything. So if I want to be have my account be very orderly, I can use tags to say, okay, this is assigned to this project, this is assigned to this team, this is assigned to this uh, other thing. And what that allows me to do is to really use the tags to filter through. Um, someone was complaining about me being too loud. I'm going to try and drop my volume. Um, sorry about that. I do tend to speak a little loudly. I got my volume I dropped quite a bit, uh, but I, I did notice it's still peaking. Uh, so if, it, if now I'm too low, uh, let me know. Um, so I'm going to create the user with the policy attached. And um, this will show me, I'm not going to use this user for anything, but here's the same access key and the secret that I was showing you earlier. And that would give me access to that uh, user. And um, we could then add other permissions, take a look at different things. Here, uh, while you notice is this policy is very simple, but it's very powerful. What it's saying is allow S3 uh, colon start. And what that means is allow any S3 action to happen uh, on uh, the resources. And then under resources, we just have start. So this user now has access to every action on every bucket on my whole account, uh, which is a little too permissive for my taste. Uh, I wouldn't particularly create users this way, but that's the difference uh, in, from the policy we created that had explicit actions and an explicit, explicit resource versus one that's just very broad. Um, and this you could use to, if you're testing, if you're uh, doing something really quickly, but in general, I don't even like doing it for testing. I don't even recommend doing it uh, when you're um, getting trying to get it, something to work because what ends up happening, 
I, I grew up in Mexico. I currently live in Mexico. And there's, there's a saying here that there's nothing more permanent than a temporary fix. So if it's 4 a.m. and you're trying to get something to work and you're getting an error permission, and instead of going in there and saying, like, I'm going to fix that error by adding the exact permission that I need, I'm just going to give it admin access, you're going to forget about it tomorrow because you're going to go sleep eight hours. Then you'll wake up, have breakfast, and you'll be like, oh, that's a different new problem. Like, I'm not going to deal with that other one. And that's when shenanigans ensue. So uh, I would, would definitely steer clear from doing overly permissive. Uh, I'm even going to delete this user right now because I don't want it. I don't need it. Um, so let's get it out of here for the time being. Um, the other thing I was going to do is, um, so let's, let's look at a few more things. The, we've talked about users, roles, groups. Um, I'll show you the groups that are in this account. Um, it doesn't show there's any groups for me right now. Uh, so I can create a new group and say, this is the DB, um, DB managers group. And then here I could say, okay, I have an RDS policy, the uh, Amazon uh, relatable database policy. And since is the managers, I could say, okay, I want a policy that's uh, full access for the data. Uh, and then I'm gonna do that. And I can even edit the policy here. And I could say, okay, um, I'm gonna attach more policies, could, gonna do different things uh, with it right here. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Now I have a DB manager role right now. And what I could do is, uh, oops, if I select a group, then I can add users to the group. And you'll see that I have these two uh, and I could add that user there. Um, pretty straightforward but that's how you can use users then there's the other one that we talked about earlier someone mentioned even mentioned in chat which is creating a role and a role is a different way of granting permissions that is not really attached to an individual it's uh it's an a, a role is like an identity that you could uh assign to someone or a, or a service and uh really work with it so you could say i want my ec2 instance to uh, inherit or take this role when my code runs so it has the right permissions um, and you don't have to store a username and password on your server now you have to worry about encrypting it or uh, packaging it with your with your code uh, maybe it, it becomes an attack vector what you do is you you separate that and you say okay you're gonna run this code this is gonna be fine and then in your EC2 instance you can say Hey, here's a role. Um, and let me show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going back to my instance. I'm going to close this because it's surely timed out. But um, I'm going to have this instance here. And what I'm going to do here is from the EC2 dashboard, I'm going to get the list of my instances. And there's a drop down here that says actions. And in actions, what I can say is uh, instance settings. And in there, I can say modify IAM role. And now for this instance, I could choose an IAM role that I've uh, created previously uh, that I've attached permissions to. And I can use that role uh, for my instance and uh, just do that. So now I've attached the role to that instance. And let's look at uh, what that role is. It was called Let's Code as everything in it. Uh, this account is and we have the let's code read only s3 policy attached to that. I'm not really going to do anything with the With that specific uh, uh, Role right now, but that's another way that you can grant permissions to the To the Europe in your account. Let me give a quick uh, Look at chat Uh, yeah, this will be uh, available as a VOD, as a video on demand uh, once once I'm done. Um, it, uh, there's a whole series. I think this is the fourth episode. I'm stepping in uh, due to John being out of the office, but uh, very happy to be here. If you have any questions, let me um, let me know. I got like my volume at half, so let me know if it's still. Oh, now I. People are saying increase and people are saying uh, bring it down. So I'm going to.
tweak it a little bit and uh, hopefully there's no buzzing like someone was saying. Okay, cool. Um, and the clank, clank, clank you sound you heard back there is uh, my dog. So well, let's take a look at that uh, AWS instance um, that we created. And this AWS instance, if we go into the security settings, we'll see that it's uh, got the IAM role that we just talked about uh, attached to it, but it also has a security group. Uh, so let's look at that security group so we can see a little bit about its different, the different information that uh, we can see there. The, the first thing that we have there is we have uh, SSH and protocol. So we have inbound rules down here at the bottom. And the, what that's saying is we're creating ports or we're opening up ports and uh, using CIDR notation so we can connect to our or accept connections from our server. So we can edit the inbound rules. And what we can say here is we could add a different rule. Let's say on top of uh, taking SSH, what we want to do uh, is uh, use HTTP and now, since it's HTTP, it's going to kind of de default to port 80, but we can then take uh, CIDR blocks and say, okay, I just want specific port, uh, IP addresses to connect to my, to my web server. So just from inside my VPC or something along those lines, and then we could add that rule as well. Um, we don't have a, <laughs> a web server to run right now, but that's uh, how you would look at that. Um, I mainly just want to make sure that SSH was open. And the other thing that we, we, we do want to do is because we're going to have, have a quick example using RDS, uh, Relational Database Service. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to edit the inbound rules. Uh, and I almost forgot about that. And what we're going to say is we're going to add an inbound rule on port 80 because the database is going to want to try to connect through there. Um, so we're going to do custom TCP just to do it a different way. Uh, same, same effect. But instead of uh, having um, custom source, what we're going to do is we're uh, going to leave it open this time because we want to take any connection from there. But um, once we start working on the database, we're going to use the security groups to uh, make sure that the database only accepts connections from our uh, EC2 instance. So now let's go look at a different service and we're going to use this tab to do so. And this is the other service that we're going to look at is RDS. Um, and RDS allows us to launch different types of databases very easily. So we have uh, a database here that's already running that's called Let's Code. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to connect to this database. But in order to connect to the database, we're going to have to make sure that uh, it's allowing connections from the right security groups. So it's got its own security group right here. And let's look at the inbound rules. Come on, scroll, scroll, scroll. Why is this not scrolling? Okay, so we see that it's got a custom TCP inbound rule. Uh, on the T, uh, TCP is the protocol. And then the port is 3307. Um, and the source is a security group but um, that wouldn't be the right port for the for a database connection uh, mysql would be trying to connect on uh, 3306 and i believe that this is also working with a different instance because we created our own um, instance so let's go and make a different inbound rule and we're going to add a rule and we're going to say this is going to be on 3306 and we're going to use a security group but i have terrible memory so the security group id we know ends in 00 0 ze 89 so uh, back here we're going to find that security group default 
Huh. Oh, you know what? Yep, we're back in Ireland. Um, that's not great, but we can fix that very easily. Yeah, so I'm trying to look at a security group that's not in that region, so it uh, did not like me. But uh, what we're going to do is just spin up a different database in uh, the region that we're working in, working in uh, because right now they're limited. We spun up small databases, but uh, that's not a problem. Uh, this is the engine options. I'm going to use the uh, Amazon Aurora uh, as my engine, and then I'm going to scope it down to its uh, test. I'm going to call it let's code db and here's where you could choose your uh the username and password and such and uh but i don't there's a oh uh, nope where is it oh easy create there's this easy create um button at the top where you don't have to uh, provide all the different information uh it just gives you the username um definitely make Make note of that because you're going to need it later and it's going to auto generate a password for me. So I'm going to create a database. It's going to take a minute. Uh, and while it does that, I'll show you another uh, pre can demo on um, creating on container security. But I'm going to check chat. Oh, yeah. OK, before we do that, someone's asking about auditing their. Um, their permissions. There's a few. So one is called IAM Access Manager. Uh, that's not it. Oh, Access Analyzer, sorry. Uh, and using AWS Access Analyzer for IAM, what you can do is um, you can actually scan, um, so you can create an analyzer and it'll show you different findings where it feels that your policies are too permissive or that you might have a problem there and uh, then you can decide what you wanna do. Um, and it's it's monitoring uh, and it's using, uh, it's always looking at your policies. Uh, it would take a little while to build one, not, not too long, but that's built in inside the IAM uh, console. There's uh, other, a few other ones like guard duty, which guard duty uses uh, AI ML solutions to um, help you detect uh, intrusions that might be coming at your uh, different uh, resources online. So these are ones more inbound, the other one's a little bit more outbound but uh, you can you can use guard duty to to do that um, in both cases you can find all the documentation uh, online um, so that was that was a nice segue uh, while this was creating and what we're going to do here is we have a database and that database is now has two endpoints so we have a writer and a reader and they're running on port 3306 and what we're going to do is we're going to try and connect to uh, these uh, endpoints from our instance. So let's go back to our instance list. And here we're going to connect to it using, uh, so we, we can stay in the browser. It's a little bit slower than using SSH, but the nice thing is I can stay in the browser and I can quickly shift back and forth. Um, weird. Looks like my audio issues are not nonstop. Um, I'm messing around with my gain, and I've got a I've got a noise gate on it, and I've got it pointing at my face. Sorry about that. Um, apparently you're listening. You I even got like an AI noise suppressor on it, so. Really, really sorry about um, the clipping that people were experiencing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and connect to the MySQL, MySQL instance um, by using the MySQL CLI. And uh, I believe it's MySQL minus H for the oh, wrong button for the host. 
and then minus u for the oh come on um for the name of the user and then here we have the credentials we're going to copy the master password looks like uh, uh let me know if the, you're still getting clipping from my microphone uh, and and i'll try to fiddle around with it a little bit more and i think it's minus p for the port six and then password i'm sure i've messed this up somehow oh yep well that that would be the first thing to do i don't have the mysql installed on here but that's an easy fix uh since i'm logged in as root i can just install things quite quickly and if it's it's all running remotely um, all downloads are pretty quick uh so let's try that again it should prompt me for a password here why is that not happening I got chat here at the bottom, so if I'm looking down and you're looking at the top of my head, that's uh, basically what's happening. I'm trying to make sure that I haven't missed anything on chat. Uh, why is that not working? Let me let me look at what I something here was not successful let's just leave that mm. Ooh. okay i might misremember this and i might have to use the dash dash host and stuff like that but uh, we'll, we can try that. So this is the host. And then this is the user. And we're going to use space there. User. And then this is, oh, I think it's double dash. And then this is a. Uh, port and this is password that looks okay there we go um and if everything works correctly we should get a welcome to my sequel happy dance moment i won't actually dance i won't subject you to that um there's also a B now in here uh, in a closed room. So today has been nonstop, incredible uh, surprises in this stream. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, let's see, RDS. Oh, actually, well, this is going to be a good example. This is going to time out because we don't have the right security on this, which is what we're here to learn. So um, let's fix that. So what we need to do is on this database, uh, on our endpoint, we could add a role to the user, but we what we really want is a security group. Uh, so we can, um, what we can do is tell it that it should accept connections on that port because uh, originally I was modifying a different database, but it was in a different region. So is everything available? Okay. 
Yeah, it looks like it is. But for some reason, it's not letting me click on it. Okay, configuration, encryption, recommendations. We could add another instance. This is not what I wanted to do. Um, it's not letting me add a security group for whatever reason. Subnet groups. Okay, let me take a quick look at this. But in the meantime, we still have to talk about container security and certificates. So I'll show you that uh, while we while I finish this. So the the first one is talking a little bit about containers and um, what we're doing here is we're using the Elastic Container Registry. Uh, we already have a repository name. Uh, we're going to create our, our own repo in there. And really, the here's the the, the magic where you turn on scan on push. Um, all all we're going to be doing is here is we're creating a repository for images. And what we want to do is whenever we push something to that um, an image to that repository, we want it to get scanned. Uh, for vulnerabilities so we can actually um, be notified proactively so we don't have to go looking for any vulnerability so we can find it um, we can we can kind of it's ob becomes ob obvious and the more obvious uh, something that is a vulnerability is the better because we will notice it and we'll act, act on it and what we're doing here is we're uh, actually um, logging into the image that we want, and then we're using Docker to pull down uh, that actual image, and then we're going to use that image uh, to push up to the registry, and we're gonna see the result of the uh, of that push in a second. And uh, a nice thing about the registry is that it'll give you the sample uh, commands that you have to run for each of these. Uh, what we're doing here is we're actually changing uh, the the tag for the for what, what we're uh, the image that we're pushing. But now uh, you'll notice that we went from having no images in our registry to having a single image in our registry, and we'll get a report um, in that in that registry. So once that's done, we, we see that we have five high um, uh, vulnerabilities. No, zero critical, which is nice, but five high is not good. And then there's quite a few medium and low. Um, and you, but you can see each one of them. You, you'll get a description for each uh, those each of those CVEs. You can even click on them uh, and get even more details on what you um, what you need to uh, know about them. Um, you could even find ways to mitigate them, uh, so on and so forth. So, so what I was doing wrong earlier is I was clicking on the wrong thing. Uh, I was clicking on the cluster rather than the instance. And here in the instance, uh, we have the security group. And inside that security group, it just it's the same type of secure group that we saw earlier for an EC2 instance. Um, because that's what's running under RDS. So let's make that bigger. And uh, what we want to do here is for this security group specifically is look at the inbound rules. So we're going to edit the inbound rules and we're going to add a rule that's be a custom TCP rule coming on port 3306. And this one we want to assign to this uh, security group, which is the security group uh, zero that ends in zero CE89, which is the one that's associated to our other um, instance, and that'll allow us to uh, get the actually succeed in that connection that was timing out earlier, and uh, that's been assigned to it. Uh, so now, this command that uh, timed out, we should work now. Whoops. Let's try that. Um, please let me know. Well, hopefully 
the thing is in my notepad. It is. And there it is. So we now have a connection, a secure connection from our server to our database uh, th through that's being, uh, the security is being maintained by uh, security groups uh, on the AWS instances by opening only the right types of ports. And in this one, I went kind of quickly through it, but what we're saying is we're limiting the connections, not using CIDR or IP addresses or anything like that. We're using uh, the actual security group that's assigned to the, uh, the instance that's trying to make the connection to say, accept the connection on this port, but only from the security group. And here we could say, um, create, I actually, how did you make an, a database? Cause this is blank right now. Cre I, yeah, my database knowledge is zero now. Um, yeah, if someone knows chat, let me know how do you, what the command is to create a database. Um, let's see. I mean, I could, I could Google it. <laughs> it's been a while. SQL create database. And oh, I just create database. Who would have thunk it? But I guess SQL commands are all caps, right? Create database. Uh, let's code. Oops. Forgot the semicolon. Now create a database, and I think the other one, this one I do remember, I think it's use. Let's code. Yeah, so now we're using the actual database. There's nothing there. There's really no, no point for me doing this other than uh, to tell you that I'm not lying. Uh, believe me, I'm your friend, Memo. Um, let's see, what else uh, have we, haven't we talked about? Um, oh. SSL certificates is a really common question. I've got a little, another little demo for you on SSL certs and a lot, uh, elastic uh, load balancers. So uh, let's look at that really quickly. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a different service that's called the certificate manager. Um, and with the certificate manager, we can actually request uh, our own certificates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna request a public certificate first um, once we request a certificate, it's going to ask us to give it a domain name. Um, and you could you could use wildcard domain names as well. You could use specific domain names. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to add two domain names. Uh, we add the <laughs> the wildcard one and then we we actually delete it. Um, but we're doing developers let's code.com and uh dub dub developers let's code.com and then the, the that third one which is star developers let's code.com would be a wildcard one um but uh we we end up deciding not to do it so we we do that we there's two ways to to use the validation for the cert if you're using route 53 which is the domain registration and dns uh service from aws uh, dns validation is the easiest easiest way to do it it's actually one click otherwise you can use email validation if you are using uh someone else's dns uh, and domain services once again, you can tag your resource so you know exactly what's assigned to it. Or uh, I know in multi, in, in larger organizations, people might tag it with their own, like owner such and such, so it doesn't mistakenly get deleted. So you actually talk to the right person before you do it. So now what we have to do is once our validation um, for our certs has passed, we're going to have to edit the C name of our DNS. Uh, and in this case, we, we actually registered developers let's code using route 53. Uh, if you go there, there's nothing there, but it, it, we actually have that domain right now. Maybe uh, you have a cool idea of what we could do there. Uh, and what we're gonna do right now is we're uh, gonna go into the uh, DNS registries and we're gonna uh, just see what's there. Um, we could edit them manually, but it doesn't even make sense to do that because you have that handy dandy blue button that just says create record in route 53. Uh, and it creates it for you. So we're just basically validating here that uh, once we refresh that um, got created and we have that C name for that first entry uh, for our um, 
for one of the domains, the one that didn't have dub 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 at the beginning. And then we can do the exact same thing for the for the second one. And then we'll have those two CNAME entries in our um, DNS service. And what this allows us to do is, is lay, in, in a second, we're gonna look at our, um, at one of the use cases for these types of certificates is when you're creating a load balancer and using that load balancer, uh, you can uh, tell it that it should be able to listen to HTTPS uh, traffic and use that for your load balancer. Uh, but in order to do that, you first needed the certificate. So what we're gonna do is use EC2 again. Uh, and in front of a, an EC2 instance, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually uh, use a load balancer and we're gonna create the load balancer, just gonna give it a name. Uh, we have a VPC, a virtual private cl uh, a cloud, uh, where our um, load balancer is set. Uh, and we get this big old warning saying, hey, you should be doing HTTPS, not HTTP. When we say we wanna add a listener for HTTPS, we have to configure the settings. And that's where that certificate that we created with AWS Certificates Manager is gonna be pre-populated going to make it really easy for us to just say configure and then uh, we can say we want to create a new security group. We already saw today what those security groups are useful for, uh, kind of defining inbound and outbound rules, uh, as well as uh, using them as a, the, 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 the place our traffic is generating from. Um, but we could also use uh, different, in this case, we're just leaving it open and saying, hey, let any HTTPS traffic in. Uh, using the, the that CIDR block 0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. And um, now we have a listener that's on port 443, which is the default port for HTTPS. It's got a valid certificate associated to it. Uh, and we can create the load balancer. It'll create everything uh, on there. And then we can actually, it's out of scope for what we're talking about today. But uh, once you have your load balancer, you can configure it and the different thresholds and all these different things to um, to scale out your infrastructure depending on what you're building, on, on traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other than that, I really want to thank you for your time and apologize for all the microphone issues. Um, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Uh, I don't know how it's already been an hour. It was really quickly. I thought I had time uh, to hang out a little bit more. Uh, if you have any questions or complaints or you wanna uh, throw a virtual tomato at me, you can find me on uh, the internet as at Memo Doring. Um, I'm gonna type that in chat. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, it was a blast. Uh, I hope John gives me a chance to come back and maybe do one where my uh, audio is not all messed up and I don't uh, lose my instance. But hopefully you learned something. Uh, the whole point here is uh, for us to share a bit of uh, our knowledge and uh, in a real scenario, not so academic. So this is something that any developer could run into at any point. Um, so if you have any other questions or if you have suggestions for another topic, let us know. Um, well, thank you so much. I hope you have uh, the, a great rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.